Hey, what's going on? Luke here. And the 2022 NRL season somewhat kicks off this weekend. The trials are here, which means that there's going to be a whole bunch of lineups announced, which also gives us a good indication of who's actually going to be playing in 2022. So I thought it'd be fun to go through all of the teams, probably before the season starts, but even when the season's going, we would go through all the teams and take a look at their best seven team and just what they look like on Rugby League Live 4. Now, the first team that we're going to be taking a look at for 2022 is Mike Henry Bankstown Bulldogs. I'm wearing that hat. I am a supporter. I'm going to have a little bit of bias, but I thought we'd take a look at them, take a look at their signings, and take a look at what the side looks like in Rugby League Live 4. Now, I will upload these sides onto the Fan Hub. Also, you can find them on the Fan Hub in general. If you just search up NRL 2022, you will be able to find them. I will do a video eventually going over how to actually download these 2022 sides, but I just downloaded one of the random 2022 sides. that had a lot of the players there, and I just went and updated a few here and there, changed some overalls, and sort of came up with the lineup. Anyways, that's the intro done and dusted. Let's jump on to Rugby League Live 4 and take a look at this side. Alrighty, we are now on Rugby League Live 4. You can see them in the custom sides on the fan hub. I think it's Jack Hetherington on the screen right now. Moving from the proposition to the second row. I think he might be a prop on the game. But you can see 82 overall. It's not the best, but it kind of fits where the Bulldogs are at the moment. A lot of question marks over them. They could be really good. They could be really bad. Obviously, just come off a wooden spoon. So, they're sort of an unknown at the moment. They've made a lot of good signings. A lot of good players have come over. But will they all gel? That is the main question. So, going through here, here's all the... I don't know, the stuff that someone on the fan hub had already made. Not really important. Home ground there. Um, Stadium Australia, Belmore. Yeah, not really important. I'll take a look at the jerseys because this is kind of cool. Um, you can see they are quite good. Um, I believe this might be an old jersey, maybe from the previous season. Not really too much of change anyways. Um, but the home jersey is definitely... Oh, okay, Solar's coming up now. It wasn't coming up before, I swear. Um, but it is now coming up. So uh, I believe on the actual jersey there is no sponsor as far as I know. But... Um, Look, there are the jerseys. Now, what we want to take a look at is the actual roster itself. You can see Josh Adokar is the highest rated player, 87 rated. This is one of a, like a custom sort of Josh Adokar, an upgraded one. You see he's got the beard there. Um, also a change of hair. I think one of the default ones had some short sort of frizzy hair, I guess. Uh, but you can see he's, he's not quite bald, but it definitely does look more like Josh Adokar. You've got Matt Burton there. Uh, when he actually plays the game, I believe he does have the headgear. If I go into, can I get it? No, I can't get it, but I'm, I'm pretty sure he actually has a headgear when he plays. We've got Tavita Pangai, we've got Luke Thompson, Paul Vaughan, Jack Avrilo, probably a little bit high for him, 84 rated, considering he's sort of, I wouldn't say he's a fringe first grader, but he's definitely not a stand at halfback, but he does have a lot of good qualities. So I suppose we need to take into account that he is quite quick. Um, he's got pretty good ball playing skills, like he's, you know, he is a pretty good attacker. Defense is pretty decent as well. I suppose he's probably like a 81, 82, so I might have to change that one. But Josh Jackson there, 84, um, ever so reliable. Um, great defender, has lost a little bit in attack. Um, as to why you sort of gone down a little bit. I believe when the game first came out, he might have been about 86. But for Taylor Mariner, don't really know what to what to chuck him as. 83 is coming back from a near career-ending injury. 83 rated. Corey Allen, pretty high. Brandon Burns, probably about right, maybe a little bit high. Kyle Flanagan, 82, pretty high. Brent Naden seems about right. Ockenball, maybe a little high. Dufty, 81, uh, made sure that he was quick as his defense wasn't great. Kind of fits in. Hetherington there. I mean, the rest of them are all pretty fair. Toppany, I added him into the squad. Aaron Shop, um, 80 rated. Corey Waddell, 79, probably a little bit high for him. Marshall King, 78. Brennan Wakeham is also there as well. Matt Dory, um, Reese Hoffman, one of the new signings. Um, look, there's a lot of good signings for the Bulldogs, but a lot of unknowns, as you can tell by the overalls. There's a lot of ones that I could see by the end of the season being a lot higher. Go take a look at the lineup, though. This is what I would consider the best 17 slash more so what I think the 17 is going to look at. So there's, there's probably a couple changes I would make, but just in terms of what I think might get picked, I think Duffy's definitely going to be the fullback. Addo Carr is on one wing with Brent Naden. I think he'll be there. I think Aaron Shop will be there, but Paul Alamonte, or however you pronounce it, I think he's a good chance of getting into the centers at some point. He's actually not in this squad. I need to download him, but I, I think at the start, at least, it's going to be Aaron Shop and Brent Naden. The wing spot is a question mark because you've got Ball there, you've got Braden Burns. Either of them could go in. Even Tui Katoa could maybe go into the side. But I've gone Braden Burns. I think he might get the first crack. Um, Avarillo, Matt Burton in the halves. I'm not sure which one's going to line up at which, which one's going to be the seven, which one's going to be the six, but I'm pretty confident this is going to be the halves pairing to start the season. Luke Thompson, Paul Vaughan in the prop position. Very, very strong front row there. Jeremy Marshall King, 78. At his, like at his peak, he could be a lot better. We saw him have a lot of injuries last year. I think he could rise a little bit, but writing's on the wall for him. Reed Marnie's coming across. 
it's just sort of a, a stopgap solution at the moment. We also do have King um, in the in the reserves too, which could work out well. We've got Penguin Jr. and Hetherington in the back, or I believe this is what they've already confirmed is going to happen. Penguin and Hetherington, at least Hetherington for sure in the back. I think they said Penguin as well. Josh Jackson played a lot of lock last year, and I thought that was probably the best I've seen him in quite some time. Just sort of locking up that middle, um, doing his job. We've had Adam Elliott there. We've had a couple of guys play um, in the lock position, and they've sort of been so hot and cold where Jacko, you know what you're getting. Uh, on the bench, I wasn't sure who would be the utility. Topany is actually someone who I could see being the utility, but at the same time, I feel like Bailey Biondi Odo did really good last year. Even a Brandon Wanken I could see on the bench. Maybe a Kyle Flanagan. I feel like they're definitely going to carry utility, but it's just a matter of do they cast Topany as a lock second rower who just happens to play a little bit of hooker sometimes or or do they see him as a full-on utility? Um, and even do they see him as a first grader? I don't really know, but I've gone for him. I've gone for Max King who's come from the Storm. Um, I've gone for Topany and I've gone for Stimson. Apparently Stimson's had a couple of big injuries. I know he's had a couple of big injuries, but he seems to be back. For Taylor Mariner, for sure, like at his peak, will be in this side, but he's like I said, he's coming back from a career ending injury potentially. He's only just come back. He's only just started running. So um, I think... He will get back into the side, but as for starting the season, probably not. Rest of the guys like Corey Waddell, Trent Barrett seems to love him despite no one else um, actually loving him. Matt Dory, um, 76. I, I could see him breaking his way into the first grade side. He's done it for the last couple of seasons. He's found himself in first grade. I think he's had big reps in, him in the juniors as well. So I um, could see him getting a gig um, on the bench potentially. Um, we've got Josh Cook there as well coming from the Rabbitohs. was the understudy to Damian Cook. Um, I think he could easily get a, get a go on hook position as well because quite frankly... Marshall King isn't the strongest hooker. Maybe even Marshall King will end up as the utility and Cook will end up as the hooker. Um, we'll be fitting for us to finally have a Cook in the number nine after Damian Cook slipped through our fingers there. Um, for the rest of the guys, like I, there's no one who screams at me. Like Corey Allen, I think he'll probably play a little bit of first grade at some point through injuries and such. But um, Sam Menefer and I, I can see him definitely playing, although it comes up censored there. Um, Kyle Flanning, I think, will probably, you know, he probably will get a game here and there. Same with Wakeham. There's a lot of guys who are really good depth players, but... Uh, at the moment, there's still lots of question marks on the Bulldogs' actual first grade side. So, don't want to start talking about death when we're not even sure about the actual 17. So, look, that's the side that I think they're going to run with in terms of, oh, let's change all the, the halves and all that. Um, so, Avrilo, your number one. Number two is Burton. Captain is Josh Jackson. We'll do that. Um, in terms of who the goal kicker is, I know Avrilo kicked last year. I think he's probably your logical one. I can't really see anyone else. Like, it's not like. Actually, no, Matt Burton kicks. Let's chuck Matt Burton as the kicker. Matt Burton, actually, I just changed the captain. Matt Burton will be the kicker, um, I believe. Jake Gavrillo, Matt Burton, either one of them, anyways. Um, so that is the Bulldog side for 2022. Let me know in the comment section below what are your thoughts on the side. Do you think they're going to do well? Do you think they'll make the top eight? That's the most important thing. I personally think they'll push for the eight. I don't know if I'm going to see them actually make the eight, but I can definitely see them push for it. I just want them to knock it in one spoon. I want them to be competitive, and I think that's exactly what we're going to get. Now, I'm actually just going to quickly upload this to the fan hub while we're here, just so you can see that I'm actually doing it. I'm going to share my copy, uploading all these ones. I'll come back when it's uploaded. Alrighty, there you go. You can see it's uploaded. It says unshared there. I'm not going to change any of the search tags or whatever. You should be able to find it. Search up Bulldogs 2022. Just find my one. It should be there. It will come up. So go ahead and download this side. Anyways, that's how I'm going to wrap up this one. Hopefully you did enjoy it. If you did, make sure you go ahead and smash the like button and subscribe to the channel if you're new around here. Let's make sure to leave a comment. Definitely need the comments. They help the channel out so much. It also shows whether you want to see this kind of content or not. Also, go ahead and give me a follow on social media. It's on the screen right now. It's Mr. Luke and YT for the most part. My Facebook's Mr. Luke, but everything else, including Snapchat, including TikTok, is Mr. Luke and YT. Go ahead, give me a follow, give me an ad, do all that sort of stuff, and stay tuned for more content on the channel and more content like this. I'll see you in the next one. See you.